Hi guys, thank you so much for joining, um, joining me today to answer a few questions about yourselves and COVIDX. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right in. Um, what drew you to social entrepreneurship? Just in, in one or two sentences, uh, would you share your story with us? You wanna go first, yeah? Sure, well, I, I guess for me, it was my experience, you know, pr practicing as a doctor and seeing the enormity of the problems available. I knew I wanted to, to make change, you know, so that was more of the social aspect. And uh, from the entrepreneurship aspect, um, I've been inspired by my, my father and my family, because I, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. So that kind of inspired me to go into entrepreneurship. Yeah, I think for me, it was really this opportunity for impact, especially in the areas where it's most needed. I mean, kind of like Yao also grew up in a developing country myself and really saw that depending on where you live and, you know, with what your, yeah, which country you're born in and, and in some sense, which side of the tracks you're on can, can change your life experience so drastically. And I feel like there's so many resources that um, really do need to be shared and, and uh, divided in a more equitable way. And that entrepreneurship is, is a powerful mechanism for doing that. Thank you both for sharing. So in regards to your, uh, your venture, COVIDX, what inspired the idea for this, this venture, for this project? Yeah, I can talk about it some. Um, so during my clinical practice in Ghana, um, I, I treated a lot of patients, obviously because it's in a tropical setting, there are a lot of diseases which are specific to the region, so like malaria, sickle cell, infectious diseases. Anyway, so um, during, during my practice, I realized that the tools available were inadequate. And um, there was a, a particular case where we had like a little boy come in, he was very sick. And even though we knew what to do, we really couldn't help. And so, you know, we tried like using improvised solutions, but it became clear that if we could um, find a way of building affordable healthcare solutions for the underserved community, it would um, make a huge impact. So what is the mission and the vision of COVIDX? I'd say big picture, it's actually to bridge health disparities, both in America as well as across the world on a global scale. And we see sickle cell as being one of the largest health disparities in, on this planet. And so we are, we're starting with sickle cell, but the big picture thing that we're really all passionate about as a team as the founders is to, um, yeah, to end these health disparities that we see on a global scale. So can, can you tell us a little bit about your venture's journey? Um, where did you start and where do you see this going in the next five years? You wanna take that one, yeah? Sure. So, yeah. So after we, we had the idea, you know, we, we spoke about it and then we decided that we wanted to use um, AI um, and some bioengineering solutions because it, it fits our background perfectly. Like Tim's PhD is in computer science and he has experience with that. And for me, you know, I had a bioengineering experience. And so we decided to use 3D face imaging and AI. Um, the long and short of it is that eventually we decided to partner with an existing lab out of Duke to help us with the core imaging technology. Um, and then, you know, we were fortunate enough to get into the ABCT accelerator. And then we received a biopipeline grant from Connecticut Innovations. And then eventually we received also the grant from, um, from Innovate Health. And all of, all of these were very helpful because it, it really boosted our energy and provided us with the needed resources. Um, so, so far we have raised close to, I'll say 160K. Um, we re also received a $100,000 um, pre-seed VC funding. And um, with the tools available to us, we have been able to build the imaging system. We also signed clinical partnerships with um, University of Cape Coast, with, which is the medical school where I actually trained. 
So it was easy to form relationships there because I'm from there. And then also with Yukon. And so now our plan is to do our data collection and then with that data train our machine learning models and then you know eventually go to market. And in the kind of a little bit further extended future, um, we'll be, yeah, like Yao said, to go to market, we have to go through the regulatory process. That's both in America, the FDA, as well as in across Africa. Um, but kind of as we're looking, you know, longer term, since our technology that we're building is a platform technology, we're starting with sickle cell, sickle cell, both diagnosis and monitoring. But from there, we can expand other blood morphological diseases like malaria, like thalassemia. And for each of these, you know, as we kind of expand to this new area, we're bringing the price of diagnostics for this, you know, specific blood, blood disorder way down because our technology is, is built to be affordable. So we're kind of expanding, starting with sickle cell and then one to the next, um, greatly reducing the, the cost of, of diagnostics in all these areas. And as we also collect this data and store that we're storing in the cloud, it's, I mean, anonymized, of course, um, we're really learning a lot about the red blood cells and how they move and interact and, and how these diseases impact them. And that data could have huge insights in the years to come that impacts you know, clinical decisions all across the board with treatment, with diagnostics, a whole bunch of things. Because when we're collecting you know, millions and millions, and then in the future, billions of images of red blood cells, um, that, that data has just a lot of insights in it to be gleaned. Thanks so much. It's, it's really exciting to hear about how far you've come and how far you will be going. Uh, so both of you were um, involved with the Yale Innovation Ecosystem in different capacities. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about how Innovate Health Yale supported, uh, supported COVIDX and, and the Greater Yale Innovation Ecosystem supported COVIDX? Yeah, that, I mean, there's been, there's been a lot. Um, there's been, I mean, of course, the, the grant funding has been huge in terms of being able to develop the, uh, the prototype, like Yao said. I mean, when, when everything shut down with COVID, it, it did make things harder to get the materials needed and stuff. But we were like, well, we're not giving up. So we, we got the materials we needed and we actually like built the lab, a mini lab in a sense, in Yao's place because all the labs were shut down. And I mean, that costs money, right? So we got to use the grant money to build that mini lab so that we could actually continue with work even with, with COVID happening. Um, so that's, you know, some, some of the progress that we've been able to make because of the grants. Um, and then we've also had like the mentorship from, from the Yale entrepreneurship ecosystem has been amazing with some just great mentors all across the board that have given us like key pieces of insight and, and direction right when we needed it to make, you know, huge decisions on the direction of the company and, and how to go, um, you know, in, in the months and years to come. Yeah, and I also wanted to add that in, in addition to the mentorship and the, the financial support, I think one of the greatest benefits I personally perceive for actually having worked with Innovate Health was that um, it, it, it lended us some credibility also, you know, because of the recognition that came with it. And um, I kind of feel it, it, it definitely played a huge role in our success in terms of being able to bring on board, you know, a VC, for example, for appreciate. And for that, we are very, very grateful. Thank you both for sharing. Um, so my, my final question is, what are one to two key pieces of advice you would give to future entrepreneurs? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Yeah, I can talk about it. I, I would say for me, I would say um, to keep your eyes wide open because most of the time the, the opportunities may come from places where you least expect it. Like with our, our pre-seed funding, for example, it was a random email in my spam box, <laughs> which we ended up filling and it ended up connecting us to someone who connected us to someone. And then we eventually did around. So always keep your eyes open. That's a good one. Um, I think hmm, when, one piece of advice I feel like in the entrepreneurship world can often be 
overlooked but can be pretty crucial is to do the research in you know whatever whatever area it is I think it can often be tempting to have a good idea and then to think oh I'm the first person to ever think about this you know I'm going to make this happen um, but doing the background research to find out you know has this been tried before who's tried it what did they do did it, how did it work you know all those things and really getting a deep understanding of the field that you're kind of stepping into with with your startup is pretty huge so then you don't go, you know, six months down the road or a year down the road and find out that uh, another company has already done this and they're, you know, wildly successful and you're in a pretty tough spot kind of thing. Great, thank you.